Hi and welcome to Icy Kicks on today's show. Well, I'm prepping up to go racing. Yes, that's right. We're taking RC Kicks to a track to race and we're going to race a few people that you might know. But before we get into that, I need to prep up some kit as I don't really have much racing stuff. Got a few vintage racing bits and pieces. So I might take one, but I'm going to need something that's a little bit newer. Now, I'm not going brand new. I've got this, a TLR LOC 22 that's going to go into the collection. This is about 12, 13 years old. So it's kind of right on the cusp. And I think I can hold my own with this. Well, I'll blame the car either way, so... Uh... But anyway, in this episode, we've got to get this prepped up, got to get all the electronics in it, I'll show you what it is, and uh, hopefully take it for a bit of a spin to make sure that it doesn't just break the minute we start. So I was lucky enough to get this, the 22 from TLR or Lossy Team Lossy. They're racing is what they changed their name to. Now, I'd just like to say a massive thanks to Scott in the US who sold me two cars for a brilliant price. So I've taken the car out of this, but there's still a lot in here. And this is the car. Now, this is in um, Scott's livery and it's in beautiful condition. This came out all the way back in 2010 or 2011. I'm not too sure. TLR 0022. Now this went on to win the Raw National Championships in 2011. So I don't think I've got any excuses when it comes to performance. I'm pretty sure it's going to be my fault that I'm not going to do very well. <laughs> it's a rolling chassis, which is why I've got to fit electronics in it. Now, when this came out, it was a big sort of step forward for Losi. They wanted to be taken very seriously as racing. So this has a 2.5 millimeter hard anodized aluminum chassis, 12 millimeter big bore shocks, uh, metric hardware, which is fantastic to see because I do really struggle with my RC10s as all my tools are pretty much metric. So uh, it always turns out to be a bit of a faff for me when I'm working on those. So working on these is so much easier over in the UK as it's all metric. Dual disc slipper clutch, big bore shocks, like I said before. So uh, yeah, super chuffed. And I think this might be able to hold its own, even though the people I'm racing against seem to have gone out and got all singing and all dancing kit. But hey, we don't compensate here. <laughs> right, let's open the box as it's uh, not just the car. I was really surprised just what else came in the box. Now you get a sleeve. It's all really nice how the presentation is done for the 22s. The quality of the buggy is fantastic. So let's open it up and see. So what do I get? A second body, slightly different style, but painted up the same. This obviously does fit onto the 22. The, that's the, the 22, uh, that's the original body style. And then this, I'm not sure what this one's from, but uh, it does fit just as well. And which was fantastic, a brand new body as well. Now, the one of the really cool things about the 22 is the motor position. In the kit, you've got everything you needed to have the motor over the rear like this, or you can have the motor mid mounted and everything's in the box to change it around to suit your own driving style. Honestly, I have no idea. There are a couple of other racing buggies that I've got, the motor has been inside and also I've got some vintage stuff with the motors on the outside. Can't say my skill level really makes any difference whether it's at the back or the front, it's down to my terrible driving. So you can actually cut these bodies, see it says here for a mid, also you can trim it if you want it uh, for the rear, which is really cool. Now I'm gonna send this off to be pro painted as I really like the box livery color, but the pink and the blue. So my plan is to send it off to be professionally painted. Now, if you've watched the channel for a while and you remember, I actually have a 22 already and it's this one. Now, this was the ready to run version of the 22. So it came with everything. Uh, you got the transmitter, receiver, motor and everything. So, but it's a bit more of a watered down version. It's not got as many bells as whistles on it. But one thing you'll notice since that video, it now has all the correct electronics fitted back in it so it's now complete just like it was 
Uh, this was sent to me, so a massive thanks because that came from America as well, as they're impossible to find the correct motor and it's in beautiful condition. I still will need to run it around the track, but uh, being that it's still winter here, the garden looks like the Battle of the Somme. So it's brilliant to have a 22 kit version as it comes with so many more bells and whistles. Um, really chuffed, beautiful bits of kit. And these are getting to the sort of the latest versions of TLR Team Losi that I will stop collecting because it goes cab forward from the 2.0. Scott didn't even tell me that he was sending me all these parts. So I have tons and tons of parts to make sure that I can get this all lovely. Let's see, it comes with, there's the mid motor, mid engine kit that comes in the pack. You don't have to buy that separately. Springs, caster blocks, uprights, absolutely tons more rims. But the good stuff doesn't stop there. Not only did I get a 22 from him, he also happened to send me this, which is a 22 2.0. So this is an updated version of the 22. Now this came out in 2014 and they did some improvements on it. They upgraded the shocks, the diff, the uh, suspension geometry, and apparently this is easier to drive which I'm gonna need as much help as I can. Again, fully boxed, beautiful condition, same quality. There we go. So I'll open up the box, show you what's in here, and then I'll show you the car. So again, it blew me away, more, more good stuff. Again, another body. The bodies are actually different. You can tell here with this ridge. Again, same thing, you can have the mid motor or you can have the rear motor. Even more parts, bulkheads, O-rings, turnbuckles. Uh, what's that one? That's the shock tower. More bolts, screws, nuts and everything. Some beautiful metal parts, aluminium, 3.5 degree. Under tray parts suspension parts, uprights, and it goes on and on and on. Now it's got an aftermarket cab forward um, body on it, brand new, never used and painted up beautifully. And I have to say, it, put, it puts me into a bit of a dilemma because I hate cab forwards, but this is painted up so well. I don't know how someone could get such a sharp line on a ridge like that and it looks brilliant also it has uh, scott's name on it as well so i'll leave that alone now i will send off the actual proper body because i want the two cars to look like these two but for going racing this weekend i think this might be a better way to go it's got the motor in the mid position but it is brand new so i'm definitely going to have to put that protector on it so i think what i'll do just for this uh, race this weekend i think i'll run this and then i will tire it and then restore it but it is brand new brand new tires so i'm going to need to fit some electronics in it so let's get the top off and then i'll show you some electronics that i'm going to put in it so one thing after getting these is the quality is just amazing. They are beautiful and they're very serious buggies. Obviously this was 2014, so things have moved on, but this is still a highly capable buggy compared to some of the vintage stuff that I own. Now, as for the electronics, well, I don't have a massive budget for this. So I've kind of had to run through my parts bin and the main one for me is getting a really fast servo. So I've gone with this which is a 4096. These are really fast and I've got a few of these so I managed to nab one. As long as I've got a fast steering I can kind of live with the ESC and motor combo not being the all singing all dancing and I'm going to go with this that I had. It's a 10.5 turn MX-1 and it's just a brushless system. Uh, I don't even know what that is, <laughs> Sport System 2, but that's what I've got lying around and that's what I'm going to use. I'm also going to take my Cougar Classic as well as a bit of a backup, 
but I thought running just that and everyone's using latest and greatest, I'm not going to stand a chance at all. Not that I am anyway, really, but you get the idea. So we've got to put this in the car. Also from the transmitter receiver aspect of it, this is where <laughs> timing was brilliant. I was given this. This has just turned up from Radio Link. Now I will be doing a full review on this, but I need to get some hours with it so that I can actually make up my mind on this one. And it's the brand new Radio Link RC8X. Now this is a big step up in the kind of transmitters that I have, but the one that really drew me to it was that it uses the same receivers that I've used on my other radio links. So I've got like 40 of these things and I didn't want to have to change them all. So this is brilliant. Now I have fired it up once and this is not going to be a review. This is just showing you what I'm going to use, but I'll need to start messing with this. It's got a huge, great big touchscreen color display and hopefully that's going to give me a little bit of an improvement on the speed of um, steering and stuff. Right, so next we've got to put the electronics in the car, fire it up and get it working. Putting the servo in the car was a hell of a lot more effort than I thought. I expected it to be a two minute job, but it turned out to be like 45 minutes and I had to remove the whole bulkhead. Also, this car is set up to run saddle packs. So I had to dig out my saddle packs, make sure they all work, and then try and get all the wiring. There's not much space in this car, so it's super tight. So we've kind of skipped forward a little bit because it's a whole other day. Yes, I went down a bit of a rabbit hole trying to get the configuration of the 2020 2.0. I managed to find online a full spec sheet from a few professional racers and I set out to actually see if I could configure mine to match what they were running. Having so many bits and pieces, I could actually set it up quite well to match theirs. And I thought that's probably the only chance I've got to save from being totally useless as it's a brand new car that's never been configured so I thought if, at least if I can have some kind of baseline to start with maybe if I'm lucky it will go around the track reasonably well I don't know anyway I've managed to pack everything up I've got both cars the Cougar and the 2022 2.0 and just about everything including the kitchen sink because I'm probably gonna break it all we're gonna do now is load up the car and head off for a bit of racing let's go 